talk about muscles and actually specifically I want to talk about muscles and tendons there's a couple of things I want you to draw out from this lesson I want you to draw out the role of both muscles and tendons but specifically I want you to notice that there are oops I went too high there let me come down a bit further I want you to recognize that there are pairs of muscles that work together that's going to become important to us later on and as I said before we're going to look at the role of tendons okay so that's going to come through and there was actually a third thing I want to talk about the muscle uh, the movements that each of these muscles actually produces okay so where relevant I'm going to talk to you about muscle movement so let's actually get started with that and see how we can make progress so typically what we do in a lesson like this is I'd show you an image here or an image here of the whole kind of muscular system and then we'd analyze it we will come back to that at times here but what I want to do is I want to sort of almost section the body up and look at individual muscle groups so let's name first of all and by the way naming these things really isn't our target today we do need to know these names of course we do but more than that, I want you to understand what they do and they roll, the role they, they play. So this one here, let's see if I can write it a bit better, it's called the latissimus dorsi. This is a D, crikey, not the best handwriting. Latissimus dorsi. Now what does this muscle actually do? Well, as you see, it sits here on the back and it's kind of wing-shaped. I'm drawing around here. Now, if my elbow, sorry, if my shoulders were up kind of in this position, maybe I'm pulling maybe I'm pulling a bar down from uh, above on some kind of pulley if I was to pull down in this direction down in this kind of direction this latissimus dorsi would be the primary muscle that actually caused that okay let's let's move forward we're now going to look at this muscle here notice I've got two images of this I've got the deltoid muscle here so these two are both the deltoid okay now we can actually almost recognize the deltoid has almost three parts of it it's got like the front bit the back bit and this bit over here is like the side bit couple of things I really want you to be aware of the deltoid is responsible for the shoulder moving here 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 this is what we refer to as abduction okay but the shoulder can also move the arm in front of the body we call this flexion it can also move the arm behind the body we call this extension of the shoulder okay so this is shoulder specific not the elbow so we've got flexion extension abduction all performed by the deltoid so a super important muscle in that sense another part of the shoulder and probably one of the more complex muscle groups that we're going to talk about today is I'm going to do a different color there is this one here this group of muscles here that sit on the scapula and actually just inside in some cases this group of muscles here is called the rotator cuff okay rotator cuff now the key thing about our rotator cuff is they provide shoulder stability now I'm not going to get into the four muscles if you really want to know they're called teres minor infraspinatus supraspinatus as anyway I will stop right there but these promote stability in the shoulder and there's ways of exercising these muscles particularly rotation at the shoulder is a good way of doing it now let's go further let me jump to some kind of uh, white here we've got these kind of chest muscles now we're not going to get marks for chest muscles we need to refer to these as the pectorals now you'll notice that this is a plural pectorals this because this is a muscle group there's actually more than one muscle uh, the, we're actually seeing the pectoralis major there as the main one there's other muscles underneath now these muscles are important because they are breathing muscles we're going to look at other examples of these in a second they do other things too but these muscles are particularly important in what we call inspiration and by inspiration we are talking about breathing in during exercise so when we're exercising these muscles actually contribute to breathing now this one I reckon a lot of you will know muscle on the front of the fore of the upper arm here of course this is our bicep muscle so if this muscle contracts and shortens and remember although muscles can contract and lengthen all muscles can do is pull that is the only thing a muscle can do okay so when this muscle pulls here it makes this arm specifically the elbow flex in this way so we get elbow flexion elbow flexion from uh, the arm here now let's go a little bit further we've now got the back of the arm notice that this of course I reckon a lot of you know this one this is the tricep but notice that this is a muscle pair the back of the upper arm with the front of the upper arm which is the bicep they pair together more of which in other tutorials but this muscle you see here it kind of inserts down here it's actually on the ulna that where it sort of connects to the forearm and what this does is when this muscle pulls and shortens in this direction it straightens the elbow like this and we call that elbow 
extension elbow extension beautiful now for this next one i've had to strip away a few layers these are our abdominals now just be aware that again abdominals is a collective term we are specifically looking at the muscle the rectus abdominis more of that when you study further but this muscle here is a super important one a couple of reasons it is also a breathing muscle okay and it's involved in breathing during expiration or breathing out during exercise only actually breathing out so it's a breathing muscle but the other thing of course is if this muscle kind of con contracts and shortens this way it does like a crunching action we can call that flexion of the spine but it just sort of brings your body into that, that crouch position right now this next one maybe you're not sure what these muscles are here there's a pair on either side these are called hip flexors there's actually two muscles. One's called the iliacus. The other one's called the psoas. It doesn't matter for this level. But they're called hip flexors. So what do they do? They flex the hip. Okay, no surprise there. Now remind yourself that flexion is the leg coming in front of the body and extension is the leg going behind the body at the hip. Okay, so when your running leg goes in front of you at the hip, that's a flexion. When you sort of kick it back behind you, that's extension. So really nice that we can recognize the differences. Now, of course, the pair of that muscle or the group is the gluteals. Okay, so these are the gluteals. Now, again, there's multiple muscles in here. We're actually showing the gluteus maximus, but we'll talk about gluteals. Now, this muscle, what this does when it contracts, it pulls the leg behind in this direction. So that, of course, is hip extension. So guess what? Our hip flexors and our gluteals work together as a pair. Now, I love the angle of this particular image. Notice I got this one on the slant. These muscles at the back of the upper leg here, here, these are the hamstring group, okay? Or let's just refer to them as the hamstrings. Now, when they contract and shorten, shorten, they flex the knee. And this is for knee flexion. Lovely. Of course, they have a pair. Most skeletal muscles do. And the pair, and by the way, notice here, one, two, three muscles in each of those groups. I'm not going to name them here, that's for future study, but just know that they're there. Again, here we've got one, two, three, four muscles. These are our quadricep group. That's where our quad comes from, right? And again, I'm not interested here to tell you the names of these. Uh, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis. Okay, you can show off to show one if you really want to. But these quadriceps, when they contract and pull up like this, they straighten the knee that is known as knee extension okay knee extension we're almost there guys thanks for sticking in with me we're very nearly there knee extension now last three muscles before we look a little bit at tendons this muscle here is actually two muscles there's one behind this as well this muscle here you see it's in two parts that's not the other muscle i'm referring to this is called the gastrocnemius what a spelling what is that c doing in the middle of there the gastrocnemius now this gastrocnemius is attached to this huge tendon which inserts down on the heel so when this muscle pulls up in this direction it points the toes down like this and that's what we call plantar flexion plantar flexion notice i mentioned a tendon there muscles seem to attach the tendon to bone sorry the tendons seem to attach muscle to bone interesting now let's go a touch further i'm going to come to this example now now front of the shin this muscle here sits across the shin bone can get very tender um, if we do a lot of weight bearing exercise this is called the tibialis why the tibialis because it's along the tibia anterior why anterior anterior simply means frontal frontal of the tibia where is this muscle it's on the front of the tibia when it pulls it pulls up like this and curls our toes up we call that dorsi flexion what a little word of clarification dorsi flexion one word plantar flexion two words last muscle before i briefly talk to you about tendons we've got this muscle here we can call it the neck muscle this one especially this one here this is called the sterno clido mastoid what a word we have notice sterno that's for the sternum look it inserts here on the sternum and this is really important because this again is a breathing muscle it is a breathing muscle and specifically that breathing muscle it pulls up in this direction when we're breathing in we can call that inspiration during exercise and it further lifts the sternum and the ribs and the thoracic cavity so that we breathe in more deeper lovely that's what it's for last thing guys 
I've gone back to our gastrocnemius image. Why? Well, I specifically want to focus on this tissue. You guys probably know that this is an Achilles tendon. Now, I don't think that's going to get you any marks in the exams anytime soon, but this word could, tendon. Now, what is the role of this tendon? Notice it attaches to muscle. We've got our gastrocnemius up here. It attaches to the heel. I'm just going to put H. It's actually got a bone name called calcaneus, but anyway, that's for another level too. So we've got it. We've got the gastrocnemius, the heel. It connects the two. So what does it do? It connects muscle to bone, okay? And the, th the point I really want you to take out of this, guys, is that when this muscle, when this muscle, it's not a good color for this, when this muscle here, when this muscle here contracts upwards, contracts upwards, it pulls on this tendon, it attaches to the heel, the heel therefore lifts, in other words, the, t the toes point down, muscle to bone, and the key term I really want you to take away with regard to that, it's for force transmission. Force is generated in the muscle tissue, those contractile protein tissues, biology lesson there, and of course it's transmitted by the tendon onto the bone, onto the skeleton. That is, um, or those are our muscles, little roll of tendons, cheers.